Do you know what happiness is? Happiness is being in that place where you're the receiver of the right idea at the right time. Happiness is being in that place where something occurs to you at the most opportune moment. Happiness is being at the top of the stairs. You're getting ready to walk down. You don't know it, but your heel is caught in the hem of your pant leg. And you are about to take a header down the stairs. But the broader part of you knows that and gives you the inspiration to take hold of the railing. So when you go to move your foot and can't, you're stable. That's happiness. That's happiness. That's alignment. Happiness is moving in traffic and having an impulse to take this exit for no good reason other than you feel like it or even taking it even though you didn't really mean to because you turned your driving over to your higher power for a moment and you missed the traffic jam or you missed the traffic congestion as a result of an accident. All kinds of things like this are happening to you all day, every day. But when you start deliberately being happy, deliberately beating the drum of things that feel good, deliberately discerning, deliberately molding yourself into better and better feeling places. When you do that deliberately and those things happen, now you have conscious awareness of it. If Esther had not had that conscious conversation with Jerry in the car right before she went to her room, the bird on the porch would have just been a bird on the porch. But it wasn't just a bird on the porch. She would have missed that if she had not been vibrationally up to speed. You see what we're getting at? Mm -hmm. So much of your world wants to chalk those kinds of rendezvous, coincidences, which is incidences that cooperatively combine. Mm -hmm. They want to call them coincidences in the attitude of luck or fate or chance. They would understand that it's cooperative components coming together. In other words, people who are looking at things like that are wanting to call them happenstance, and we want to call them creation. And so when you get clear-minded like you are, and you understand how far you've come, and you have, and you realize how powerful your desire is, and it is, and then you deliberately focus upon the strongest desire that you have, which you spoke when you first sat down here, to be happy, to be happy, to be happy, to be happy. To be happy, meaning to be in alignment, meaning to be in control of my own thoughts, meaning to be in control of my own vibration, meaning to be in vibrational concert with the source within me, meaning to be in vibrational concert with everything that I put into my vortex, meaning right here, right now, being in alignment so that I will be the interpreter, the manifester, the realizer of the best that could happen in this moment. That's happiness. This moment and this moment and this moment and this moment. It's not saving up for a vacation. It's not putting up with all this stuff. It's not going to work all week long doing stuff I don't want to do so that I can get some money so that I can finally go do something that I do want to do because when you get there to do what you do want to do you're not happy because you haven't been practicing happy at work you're not going to be happy on that vacation if you're not happy at work while you're earning the money to go on vacation are you don't you get on vacation and don't you just complain it's too short it's too <laughs> short I don't get to do this often enough my flight was delayed. The weather wasn't good. In other words, you can't get there from there. You get to happy from happy. Well, Abraham, that helps a lot. <laughs> so you're telling me that if I get happy, I'll be happy. Let me write that down. <laughs> and if I get rich, then I'll be rich. I'll write that down too. We're saying you got to find a little piece of it. You got to fan the flame of it. And you got to not keep spitting the fire out with things that don't matter. And after a while, you'll get that momentum going and you'll feel happiness, not just sometime, but you'll be radiating it. And then when someone says to you, what are you doing? The reason that they're asking is because you've got what they want. Every single person that wants every single thing that they want, whether it's a material object or a pile of money or a circumstance, an event, a relationship, everything that everyone wants is because they believe that there is happiness in there. There's happiness right here, right now, if you're in the right vibration.
when you finally made the decision that you were going to do something different, that decision was your grid filling in. That was you having ask and ask and ask, getting the vortex going and going and going. And at a moment of little or no resistance, that determination came to you and you knew what you were going to do. Remember how clear you felt? In fact, you're still feeling sort of clear about it because you were wanting to convince us all of that turning point here and now. So turning points, you like the word turning points? Turning points are often the grid filling in with an idea that you are now ready for. It's not that the idea isn't there. It's that you're not ready for the idea. It isn't that you're not ready for the idea because you don't want it, because you do. It's because you're not ready for the idea because you're not a vibrational match to the desire. You're a vibrational match to the absence of the desire. Feel the difference? So you ready yourself for what's in your vortex by feeling better. And you feel better by leaving out the things that don't feel good and focusing on the things that do feel good. So it is this simple. Take the handful of things that feel good and just run them into the ground. Have you ever had a good joke that you just want to tell to everybody? <laughs> Pretty soon you're repeating it again to the same people and they're saying, dude, I heard that. I, I laughed the first five times, it's over for me. But you know how fun it is to get hold of something that feels good, that you can delight yourself and others with. Well, this is the same sort of thing. Get a handful of those things that are delightful to you and just play the loop again and again and again and again and again. Let it be your basis of traction. Let something that delights you be the loop that you play that keeps your grid in this high vibration so that what's in your vortex can show up now and now and now and now and now. You know it. Haven't you ever gotten into that zone, that frequency, where everywhere you turn, something good happened? Esther says that's what it's like hanging around with Barbara. She loves traveling with Barbara because it's happy everywhere. They walk up to a very controlling, very official, official <laughs> at the airport. And she's barking at everyone. A man made the horrific mistake of letting his toe step over the line <laughs> by an inch. And she put him in his place. Sir, step back. He did. And he didn't like it. And Esther thought, Ooh, that was harsh and unnecessary. And Barbara who refuses to focus on anything unpleasant, missed it completely. <laughs> so when she got up there, she got a big smile. She got moved fast to the other line. In other words, she's treated like royalty. <laughs> while this poor man <laughs> was put into the dungeon. <laughs> Not get what we're talking about. In other words, we've been explaining for a while, and we know you've been hearing, that all this sifting and sorting of life has caused you to create a vortexual version, a vibrational version. And most of our physical friends, even those who have been listening to us for quite a long time, they really don't accept the realness of this vibrational reality until it manifests. And so we talk to try to help you to sense the vibrational version, to feel the vibrational version. In other words, if we could get you to feel secure, even before it manifests, it would manifest faster. Most want it to manifest before they feel secure. But that's going about it backwards. So if we can get you to feel secure, if we can get you to feel in love, in love, before the person shows up, the person will show up. But humans think they need a person to be in love with. And we want you to know you can be in love with an idea. You can be in love with the idea of a relationship. You can be in love with the memory of a relationship. You can be in love with that aspect of that relationship and that aspect of that relationship and that aspect of that relationship, which means holding it active in your vibration. And it has to then be realized by you. So this realization recently, the way we are describing it to you, maybe to help you understand it. 
But since you sometimes don't accept the vortexual version, then the grid version isn't easy to follow either, but we're going to give it to you anyway. Everything you want is vibrationally gathered, all the cooperative components in your vortex. And it is ready to reveal itself to you. And the reason that we're using the word reveal or realize is because you are going to be the interpreter of it. In the same way that that sweet bird was the interpreter of a message from Jerry to Esther. There are interpreters all around that are ready to interpret the message to you. Humans, we're not just talking about birds. We're talking about experiences. We're talking about financial forces. We're talking about ideas that flow to you. There's all kinds of manifestation that occurs once the vibration of your grid, which means your practice day-to-day -day vibration, is closer to the vibration of your vortex. It just has to be, you see. And you've lived pieces of that. We know we've been taking a bit of long time here, longer than we promised at the beginning, but it's so worth contemplating. How happy am I? How happy can I be? How good can I feel? What's the best feeling thought that I can find right now? What's working in my life? What's working out? What do I remember that felt good? What's happening right now that feels good? How general do I need to be? You can always find something to feel good about. And when you do, and when you make that your habit, then the actualization of it, the realization of it, the manifestation of it is so pronounced in your experience that people will be flocking to you and saying, what is your secret? And you'll say, I'm happy. And they'll say, I know that, I can see that. That's why I'm asking you what your secret is. <laughs> and you say, no, I was happy before I was happy. And they'll say, well, that doesn't make any sense at all. And you'll say, well, I purged unhappy thoughts from my experience by focusing on happy thoughts. Well, what do you mean? Well, I didn't actually purge them. I just started emphasizing the happy thoughts. I started making lists of positive aspects. I counted my blessings. I learned that in church. I counted my blessings one by one. And the more I focused upon them, the more that vibration was mine. And the more that vibration was mine, the more law of attraction put me in the vicinity where I could realize it. So life isn't happening to me. Life is happening from me. I'm emanating the signal to which all life is responding. So when I get up in the morning, I decide, how's this day going to feel? I'm going to feel intuitive. I'm going to feel inspired and I'm going to feel connected and I'm going to feel vital and alive and I'm going to feel happy and I'm going to feel confident and I'm going to feel kind. I'm going to feel loving and I'm going to be at the top of my game. I'm going to feel innovative. I'm going to feel energized. I'm going to feel invigorated. I'm going to feel uh, inspired, but I'm going to feel inspired moment by moment. I'm going to feel guided. I'm going to feel worthy. I'm going to feel deserving. I'm going to feel deserving of all of the goodness that has been taught to me all of my life. I'm going to feel deserving of that. And I'm going to demonstrate my deservedness through my happiness.